Hi, everyone. Uh, here it's 8 a.m. in the morning. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm glad to, to be here sharing some of the things I I love to, to, to research and know about. I'm Peruvian. I live in, in Huaraz. Huaraz is a... Lima is the capital and of Peru, and uh, I live in the at eight hours from Lima, in the middle of the central Andes of Peru, at three thousand meters. And close to to Huaraz, there is a temple, a Chavín de Huantar. So I will um, talk about the transmission of culture through rituals in this context. And this can be tricky because it's a culture that uh, started 3,200 years ago and ended in the fourth century before Christ. So we really don't uh, know exactly uh, for sure uh, what was going on then. But um, through uh, archaeological, anthropological, through indigenous perspectives, through rituals in the temple and around the, the area, uh, we have been able to, to understand the temple a little bit better. Um, in in Huaraz, in Peru, what I do is a uh, research. I, I mainly research a, a, a medicinal plants and visionary plants. Um, I, I research also the transmission of knowledge, the mobilization of knowledge from one generation to the next. And, and Chavin is a very interesting example of how uh, this happened because there was no written language, but we know for sure that this time of Chavin, eight centuries, many things change. Uh, all the Andean knowledge gathered in one place and then was transmitted to many other places. And, and the Andes was not the same again after the, the, the Chavin culture. It was the first horizon. We call it horizon because it's a, a, a moment in time where all the, all the, all the culture is, is shared and, and, and there's a lot of diversity. And um, for example, in, in the language here, Quechua language, uh, we have two words to say us, nosotros, nos, uh, nu, noi. Uh, I don't know how you say us in other languages, but in Quechua is two. We say nohansik, which is us together. We, we all, but not the other people in the in the other rooms <laughs> in the other sessions so, so it's an exclusive us so people in Chav in chavin or or in this region can say no hansik and they mean us but not everybody else but the other word is no sorry no, ha no hakuna is exclusive and no hansik is inclusive no hansik means all of us all of humanity there's nobody's excluded Nobody is, is outside, is Nohansik. And if you say Nohansik, Japansik, it means everybody, humans and non-humans, the, the, the sun, Taita Inti, Mother Earth, Pachamama, Mamakiya, Mother Moon, the wind, everybody is, is there. Animals, plants, the, the mountains, Nohansik, Japansik, it's all of us. And this, um, it's not unique for, for <laughs> uh, this vision of us. It's not for or only for Quechua cultures. It's, it's very common in, in, in indigenous cultures from the Americas, First Nations, is us. Us with nature. There is no separation. And, and we will see. I, I will start sharing some images and I will talk about these images. Sometimes I'm, I'm, um, I take people to Chavin. I guide people from Peru and abroad. And, and this will be a similar, uh, it will be like a virtual uh, tour around Chavin 
and, and these uh, issues, ideas, topics of the transmission of knowledge uh, in a very different way, in a communitarian way, in a ritual way, in a spiritual way. So I will begin and um, feel free to, to um, ask questions in the chat and, and raise your hand if, if you want to share, but I want it to be very um, dynamic and participatory because that's how I guide to Chavin too. Uh, I, I take people and we talk during the journey. I have to say that also I, I in the past for I have been researching this for 25 years, but also for 10 years in my past, I was sharing a, a sacred plant called the San Pedro cactus. And uh, I, I learned a lot about that. I, my grandmother and my great grandmother and my great great grandfather shared this medicine too. It's a missionary cactus, sacred cactus that was very central to this culture. So, um, this uh, I continue to do participating rituals today with this cactus, and I, I can uh, see through experience my own experience and also the, the the feedback of people of of the importance of this rituality. So this first image is a ceramic, is a ceramic from the Chavin times, and it shows male and female uh, humans together in one. And this is all the, the material culture of Chavin is showing, telling you this, this message of complementary opposition in balance. What about the hole in the center? There was a hole in the center, right? In the last ceramic, a circular hole? Yeah, that's... That's tricky. <laughs> um, we will talk about the chacana. The, the, there's an Andean symbol called the chacana. It's it's, it's a, a square which is male and a circle that is feminine. Um, and um, what we see here is that it, there is there is something 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 very feminine in what is material. Uh, earth is material. Uh, Pachamama is material and it's the spirit is female, Mother Earth. So everything that is linked to, to the material, the spirit coming into, into the into this dimension uh, has a, a female part. But that's um, uh, the concept. Yes. We're, we'll be talking about many, many concepts, but uh, and then culture is not about the concepts uh, that can be represented in this material culture, but it's about not only cosmo vision, but also cosmo uh, uh, vivencial, vivencias, cosmo vivencias. That means that we, we have to walk. Yes, it's we have to walk. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, the male is the, the vision, but the female is experiential and, and this has to go together in, in balance so we don't know for sure what means the circle uh, but there are ideas that can connect to this so we'll continue uh, this is another uh, instrument it was is a, a wooden tablet and shows two persons a male and a female and in in the, in the back, you see them uh, in a very tender way. They are together holding each other. And and this is a, it's not from Chavin, but it's it's part of the legacy of Chavin. Uh, this complementary position together as one. This is not also Chavin. I'm showing you some some of the the, the legacy of Chavin. And this is a, 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 a traditional ritual. These rituals is still happening in Peru, in, in the north of Peru mainly. 
de Cactus Rituals. Y en Cusco, an, another popular city, eh, main city, there are some rituals that are very different. But this is very common. You see healing activities, but also uh, prayers. And there is also music. And because there is a rattle, the, the person to the left, right, is holding a rattle and chanting. These are ritual chants. So all what happens in these rituals is, is what happens in life, but it's, it's uh, together. These rituals are a uh, collective. They are not uh, individual rituals. Uh, you can do individual rituals, but are for more initiatory purposes for the people that conduct these ceremonies. And well, I will begin with, with the presentation, with the images. There's not too much text just at the end. So this is South America. You see, Peru is the third largest country in, in South America. Uh, first is Brazil, Argentina, then Colo uh, Peru and Colombia, and then you have smaller but still big countries. Uh, for example, uh, France and Germany and the Benelux countries can fit all in, in Peru. So you have, imagine France, Germany together with all the differences of cultures, of languages, and the Benelux too, the Holland, the Netherlands, Belgium, and, and Luxembourg, all fit in the territory of Peru. And it's- I'm sorry to be bothering you, but the, the screen is a little dark. Is there any way for you to uh, light up the, the, because it went, um, it's almost black. You can barely see the image. It, it's not like that for me, Paula. I wonder if oh. that's, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I had thought that everyone was feeling that. If, if you can see clearly, that's, that's good. I think we can, yeah. Never mind that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So what, one thing about the, the territory of Peru is that through the half from the north to the south, we have the Andes, a big, large mountain range crossing the country. And, and here with Chavín de Huantar, which is here in the center, it's in the middle of the Andes of Peru. And it's in the middle also in a horizontal way. Uh, in the coast is desert. We have deserts and, and small valleys, but to the east we have the Amazon basin. So we have a very tropical forest and, and biodiversity. So it's it's very uh, it's a very biodiverse country, like like Colombia and Brazil. Uh, and you in, in this map, you see a lot of places, Pacopampa to the north, uh, Yauca to the south, all these cities, small uh, archaeological sites were connected to Chavín. Chavín was a pilgrimage center. 1200 before Christ, Chavín was receiving people from long distances from, for example, the far away east of uh, Dresden, for example, in Germany, to um, uh, the Pyrenees in France. They were gathering in the center of Peru. It's a, it's a large area, different cultures, different languages, and all they were traveling to Chavín. Imagine um, La Meca. La Meca, uh, People go from Indonesia to Morocco to La Meca. It's a pilgrimage center, and they speak different languages. They have different cultures. It's not the same Morocco as Indonesia, but people still are meeting there, the, the Muslims in, in this spiritual center. But La Meca is after Chavin. At the times of Chavin, La Meca didn't exist, or didn't, Rome didn't exist, Athens was also, Greece was in a mythical era. So this is very ancient and uh, uh, it was a pilgrimage center, but it's not only um, why people traveled uh, to Chavín for religious purpose, but for more cultural purposes, to be part of a, an exchange network of 
knowledge, but also of uh, goods. And um, also it was like a, like a, a place where culture was transmitted and then people were trained, initiated. Was it easy to travel? When there were no roads. How? When there were no roads. Ah, well. Easy uh, they, they have, we have um, rails, uh, roads, like the Appian Way in, in, in Europe is rails with stones that were maintained and people were using a, there were no a, a car, carretas a, because if the Andes is hilly, it doesn't work there. They didn't have but carriages we, or carts. Yes, but we had a, animals like a, llamas. Llamas is a, is a Andean animal domesticated especially for transport of goods. But it's still today, you see people in the Andes walking a, a lot of kilometers per day, like 20 kilometers per day, just going from one town, crossing a, a, a pass and going down, pass at 4,500 meters. So um, it was from going from Paco Pampa to Chavin, you, you had to take like weeks, three weeks, and you had to prepare. It, it was a, an effort from the community. People had to save um, foods, prepare with blankets and llamas, and, and you had to have persons that knew how to get to Chavin from the south, from the north, east, and west. Is a, a close image. So all these is, all these uh, places were places that places that archaeological remains have shown that they were going to Chavin. It was part of this uh, uh, Andean uh, world, known world. All all these towns were connected, and they were all going to Chavin. So. Chavin, this is a, a contemporary picture. This is the, a, the, to the right, you have the town, the modern town, where the ancient town was also there. And uh, in the, to the left, you have the temple. This part is the temple, the main temple, because you also had the temples in the top of the hills uh, around Chavin. The picture is taken from a, a hill too, and it's an ancient uh, shrine where, where the picture is taken. So you have a, what what is very interesting is that Chavin is between two rivers, the Huachexa and the Mosna River, one flowing from west to east from a, a sacred Wanzan mountain, and one going from the south to the north, the Mosna. Wachexa means uh, to give birth, parir, give birth, give life. And what the Chavin did was to take water from this river through channels and take it into Chavin. So you had you have like two kilometers of underground channels with water flowing there. So you can also see it as a water temple. And also you have two kilometers of galleries that were used to move people around. That's very unique. In total, you have four kilometers of underground systems below the temple. That's why Chavin is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, we'll see more. <laughs> so we have here as the square plaza, the circular plaza to the, to the, in the upper part. Uh, you see my cursor, right? Mm -hmm. this moment, excellent. And and underground, the square plaza and the circular plaza and, and these buildings, you had um, the the galleries, 
Yes. So you have an under under temple, a temple below, and a temple above, upper and, be, and lower temples. And around the temple, you had a lot of stones with uh, sculptures, sculpted stones. For example, what do you see here? Um, do you see, do you recognize an animal? Um, if you could move your, I was just gonna say, if you move your, your cursor a little bit so that we can see the movement, because it's very faint. It's a lion, right? It's it's a it's a big cat. It's a jaguar. In, in the Americas, I know like you can generalize the tiger in Asia, the lion in Africa, the Mediterranean. In the Americas or Latin America, the spirit animal, the power cat, feline cat, is the jaguar. It's the third most the, the third largest feline in the world the jaguar so you have a jaguar here here but also you have some um, other animals uh, that are part of the jaguar you see here the head of a snake so that's typical chavin art in in the back of my my image you see a chavin uh, art iconography and you see a lot of uh, snakes. You also have uh, birds, mainly mainly eagles and fa falcons. So if you know, if you like shamanism, <laughs> shamanism has this uh, power animals element. And the, the animals usually are uh, the, the jaguar, uh, well, or the tiger in Asia, but also the eagles, the falcons, you sometimes see some condors in Chavi, and the snakes too, but also the the cat, the bats, bats also are very important. For example, you see a typical um, stone of Chavin, and you see the two felines getting together, and they are made of small snakes. Uh, it's we call it visionary art, fractalic art. One is made of many parts. You see little eyes around the human legs but with the, the nails of uh, a falcon and also some wings. So you have winged uh, animals. You also have, um, I'm, I'm getting listening. You're hearing me, right? I, feel, I think the connection, yeah. I can hear you. So, mm -hmm. They also work in ceramics and metals and textiles. So I talked about the underground galleries. So this is a picture of one of the galleries going down. And these galleries have the condition uh, or the characteristic of having uh, been, if you enter, it's dark and it's a silence, it's, it's silent. What happened here, we'll talk about uh, later in this presentation. This is an image of one of the galleries so it's a, it's a ceremonial center. So most of the, the, the elements and spaces of this temple were used for rituals. Around the temple and its buildings, you had pen on heads, stone sculptures of heads that were inserted in the walls of the temple. We have found more than 150 pen on heads, all unique. These are the, the one to the right has is not there anymore. It fell, but the one to the left still is there. It's the only one still in, in its original position. But we have found like more than 150. For example, here are some. You have this one that is very big, very large. 
and they were lost in a landslide in 1945. Many of these that you see here, but some other still are, are in Chavin in the museum. Uh, you have this with, with, this is very interesting, the one to the top uh, left. It's a tenon head that from the eyes, a cactus is coming out. It's, this is a, the representation of a cactus. So what we understand the message is here is that with the cactus, you see, yes. Sometimes when we use visionary plants, our percep perception is expanded. We also can expand our perception through uh, some techniques like uh, breathing, meditation, dancing. Um, and one of these techniques is the use of visionary plants. And in, and in this, especially in this Chavin culture, the cactus and the wilka, another visionary plant, were very central to the rituals. You also have some tenon heads with the, the, the gesture of blowing or whiffling. Yes, the top ones, all these are representations of people whiffling. And, and today in, in Andean rituals and in Amazonian rituals with ayahuasca, sometimes they, they, see, they whiffle. It's part of the, the magical songs, the characteristics. More tenon heads, you see that uh, the fangs in the tenon heads is a very, in Chavin, every mouth has fangs. <laughs> it's very typical. And also the elements in the, in the, in the sculpture, the, the, the wrinkles are also made out of uh, snakes. You see to the, to the left is one of my, my favorite tenon heads. It's very feline. Yes, it's, and it's huge. It's one of the largest tenon heads. It's in the museum. The, the eyes are looking up like in a, like in a meditation. And, and this one to the left is looking straight uh, to the viewer. And you see the fangs in the right one. And to the left, you see that its wrinkles are made of snakes too. This is a snake. This is a, a more detailed image of the one with the cactus. And this is a circular plaza. So we have the square plaza, which is a more public uh, space for more people. And you have a circular plaza, which is more private. Special rituals were carried out here. We, we assume that uh, these were uh, for very, uh, specialized rituals, yes. Sometimes uh, initiatory rituals uh, need um, like like a, a way to open the space, yes. And and this is a place where this could have happened. More details is that around this circular plaza you have more sculptural elements. You have at the bottom. To the, to the bottom of these uh, stelas. A stella is a stone sculpture of, of two dimensions, yes. So you see a procession of jaguars going into the center of the staircase here. And then you have a square stelas with different uh, figures. You see to the left one holding a cactus. Um, We'll go into the details of this one. You have the, the jaguars going in a procession from the right and to the left to the center. These are more, uh, more square plus, more, more elements. And this one to the left is the, the one that is holding the cactus. You see a clear image of this one. He's holding a cactus, the sacred cactus, which is a Echinopsis pacanoi, the San Pedro cactus, Huachuma cactus, a visionary uh, plant that is used still today 
and you have um, in the head dress of this persons of this person the snakes you see the fangs and also the the hands have these nails like from a, a, a an eagle or a, a falcon and here you have another ceramics this this to the left to the left are ceramics with people persons holding the cactus and and also the representation of the back of the the person it has like a like a something in the back and also here you, you see again another representation not the same one that we saw at the start but a, a different one with two people together male and female together this is another part of the temple is the the portada de las falconias is the the falcon portal it has two columns and this is one of the the most interesting things right now uh, you have two columns circular columns with a uh, sculpted images what do you see here this thing you see two draconian uh, uh, beings one head yes this is the hands the arms the legs and the the wings so you you don't see this too much in andean in other andean cultures this is very very unique to chavin these draconian figures yes some some have also called them angels they have fangs but uh, you see that there is a difference between them for example to the left we see that the eye of this being has is more rectangular the, in the chest there is a mouth and here you have the dented vagina so this is a female dragon and to the right, you have the eye is round, circular, and it has like a a line going from through the eye. You recognize which uh, animals, bird animals, have the this line that crosses the eye. Someone knows? Wouldn't it be a condor? It's a, it's a condor. Yes, it's a condor. No, it's a falcons. Falcons have this type of, of, of eye drop. And and here you see the the um the fanged penis. This is a penis. And here in the chest there is a ray. Yes. So here, for example, you have the eagle. The eagle, the eye of the eagle is more more straight, while the one from the falcon is more round and has the the eye drop, yes. So for Chavin, eagles, female, falcons, male. And and eagles are, and this one, the harpy eagle is the, not the largest eagle in the world, but it's the strongest eagle in the world. Uh, and it has like erectile uh, uh, feathers in the top of the head. And the, the falcons, uh, are not the, the strongest, but are the fastest animals in the world. You don't see any fastest animal than a peregrine falcon. So these are power animals. They, they represent things that are uh, important. Power, vision, speed. Uh, the falcon has to uh, go after the animals he's hunting, or she or he is hunting. It has to have this, this velocity, while the, the eagles are more hunt in a different way. What else? You see that the male, the male is to the right, and the, the female is to the left. So they are holding something. Yes, it's not that they are not holding anything. The, the, the arms, the hands are holding like a staff, but the staff is different from the one to the left to the, to the one from the right. The, the female one is holding like uh, what we call a stolica, an atlatl, yes? 
This is a, a paleolithic instrument to hunt animals. You use the atlatl to put the spear and you can throw the spear in a more, in a farther and strongest way. Yes. So each one is holding a part of uh, an, an instrument. And here you cannot, it is not good to, to take this type of spiritual religious art in a literal way. Maybe, maybe you know Shiva Nataraja, Shiva Nataraja in India. Shiva Nataraja is holding a, a drum and is holding the, the fire, the Agni. Yes, it doesn't mean that the Agni, okay, he's getting heated by the fire or the drum is playing music. It means that the drum is a representation of the creation of the universe and the, the fire, the destruction of the universe. So it's, it's more than what it literal symbolizes. Here, it's the same. You have this instrument, but each part, male and female, are holding one of the parts. So, this is an important message. You need the two to be one, yes? O complementary, opposition, imbalance. And this is very important because this, this sets up the whole vision. Yes. Nobody is uh, outside, nobody is above or below someone. So we are all part of one and we need each other. Yes. We call it Janantin, this principle of complementary opposition. The two are needed together to work. Yes. And in order to use a power object, or an object of power, you need to have this balance. If not, if there is no balance, you cannot use this. So, so this is a great important thing to learn from not only from the rational way, <laughs> but through the, 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 from your heart, from, from your uh, inner being, um, or connect to your, your mind in this dimension, to your deep mind, to your spirit. So spirit and, and, and mind and heart are one. And, and uh, this is very interesting. So this principle of complementary opposition that is represented in this portal is all around the temple. The message is duality, equilibrium, together, balance. For example, here in this, in this uh, stella, the this medusa being because it's it's, it's hairs is is are made of snakes one is holding a pututo a trumpet here you see a representation of the trumpet which is a male and this one is holding the 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 shell like the shell of of this company extractive company the shell is is this one so shell feminine uh, the 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 pututo, the caracola, the, the snail, the sea snail is male. Complementary opposition. Two snakes. Yes, it's a water temple. Snakes, water. And memory and earth. Yes, snakes symbolize the, the wisdom of the earth. Also here, the, 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 this one to the left is blowing the, the, the trumpet, the shell trumpet. And this one is holding it, duality. This is one of the shells. They have found more than 20 shells of these types. They are carved, have iconography. And this is an important stone also. It's called the, the Raimondi Stella because there was an European that came in the 19th century and discovered it <laughs> for European Western audiences, but this, uh, also represents a female, uh, like jaguar, eagle, alligator being that has also a, a, a falcon, a, an eagle to the in the top of the of the of this element. This is the, the a female symbol. This is the the seat in the vagina, and this is the penis, which is a male. So male male to the right and female to the left. And you see here the Andean cross, 
which we will talk at the beginning. So it has a lot of things. It has animals, it has humans, it has plants all together in two, 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 two sides, masculine and feminine, all in one four-sided uh, stella or, or column. And this is the, the Andean cross. This is a very important symbol. The square, yes, that points out to the four directions, east, west, uh, east, west, north, south, and the center. Sorry, I, I sometimes I always have a problem with my directions, even in the Spanish. <laughs> so the center is a, the circle, but the circle is not only the center, it shows also uh, um, this symbol is not only two dimensional, it's three dimensional. Through the circle goes the upper and the lower uh, directions to the above, below, and the center. So it's seven directions. So in Chavin, you will see a lot of uh, representations and, and, and uh, stairs that have to do with the number seven. Seven is very important. Seven eagles, seven stairs, seven snakes. Uh, um, it's very important and has to do with, with the rainbow, with the music, with the energetic centers. Uh, many, many people that have had visions with the seven and the colors and the music. Music has to do with, with um, through music, you can enter into dialogue with the invisible world and also negotiate with it and work with it. For example, in ritual songs, the, the shamans, the curanderos and curanderas in the Andes and the Amazons can move energy around a, a place or a person. They can bring a energy that was is blocked in a in a body, they can through a, a magical song an Icaro move it around, and they learn the Icaros not through their, um, like in a normal Western creative process, but they talk to the plants and the plants sing and they listen to the plant singing and they can take on this singing of the plant and start to sing what the plant or or another element is singing. So these are magical songs, and in this and in this uh, uh, stone you have a pututo with a head coming out. So it's a you can imagine that they try to the Chavin people try to tell you this this is making sound and it's important to make sounds sounds in in a special direction intention consciousness. Uh, um astronomic alignment can open things so so they mastered astronomy too so this is another important uh, stone in chavin in, in chavin you can find three of the if you have to save 10 stones from the andean world you will find like half of them in chavin <laughs> because are very unique they, they don't have replicas of this in any, in any, other, any other place. So this uh, is the main um, stone of the temple. It's called the Lanzón in Spanish. They call it now it's because it has a, like spear uh, form, but it's called uh, in Quechua the Wari Huanca. Wari is come from the word uh, in, in Quechua, uh, fire is uh, Nina, but the, the flames, the, the, the light is warring in this region, warring Nina. And warring is the light, and wari Wanka, Wanka is the ancestor. Yes. So it's, you cannot think of this like a, like a divine being, like, like Ganesha or Saint, Saint. Uh, the Archangel Michael, no, this is a representation of an ancestor because Chavin has an ancestor cult. And here you have the this stone that has six meters 
And here also you can see the duality, right hand up, left hand down, eyes to the top, smile, and, and the, there is no dented vagina or fanged penis, because when Chavin wants to show you that one is female and one is male, they show you clearly, but this one has integrated the two energies. So it's both male and, and female. So one has these two energies too, and everybody has two energies. The sun has a masculine and a feminine part too. The same as the moon, the same as the earth. So it's not that Pachamama has only female energy, it has both energies. And also on top of this, uh, in, in here in the in the front of the of the sculpture, you have this chakana, this Andean cross again, four sides, uh, like a stair, like a staircase and a and, uh, circle in the middle. And what, what uh, other temples, these are from another temple of the times, Chavin times, it has the same style of art. You see an eye with a snake coming out, like these hands made of, of gold with are formed, the fingers are snakes. Uh, you also have a, this is a, a stela of a female, a leader from that time. This is remember, remember, this is 3000 years ago. Yes. You see also a female with a dented vagina, wings, like in the in the in the representation that is going up. Yes. And and next to this stella, they found this um a tomb of a woman, a woman leader, female leader. And she has these uh, earrings in the fo form of uh, uh, like feathers, yes? So it's very interesting what all these elements talk about. The cactus, the snake, the jaguar. This is a person doing a auto-sacrifice ritual. This, this person is cutting his neck, his, his throat. And all his back is tattooed. As a tooth. So what were people doing in Chavin? Why were people coming to Chavin? Uh, in the Andes today, and uh, even in the Amazon, um, and also in other cultures, for example, the Huicharricas in Mexico, uh, it's a culture that uses the peyote cactus, and once in a year, once a year, they travel from their hometown to the desert, a secret desert called Wirikuta. And they have a, a ritual there where they share this cactus and sing, dance, and they talk to each other and confront each other. If someone of, of, of this community had a, problems, had a problem in last year with another person, they confronted each other and solved the problem. And also there is a moment in the ceremony where the, these Wisharikas people rename the universe. They start in a symbolic way in, during the ritual. They start saying, okay, we'll, we will name the sun will be dog and the river will be um, the tree and the, the flower will be a tomato. So they start naming everything, but with a different name. And this is very important because during the ceremony, the, the relationships relationships are renewed. Yes. So in Andean and American ancient rituals or traditional rituals, renewal ceremonies are very important. If you have to have a strong community, you have to renew relationships. You cannot keep your resentments with a neighbor forever. You have to solve it in order to for the community to thrive. So this is a very important message I see in these times of big polarizations, of people trying to build walls between each other, 
where you mistrust your neighbor in the cities, yes? Here, what they were doing is, okay, we have to heal our, our relationships in order to be a community and, and our, uh, I flow with life, yes? And life is about renewal, yes? If you see the, the four seasons, everything is renewed. So renewed, renewal, the renewal function of rituals is very important in the transmission of culture. But not only that, for example, in, in the galleries, in Chavin, in, in anthropology, we have a, a concept called the initiation cave, initiation cave. That's where a, a person that has some gifts, like he can uh, have some uh, spiritual sensitivities, can connect to something, and they have to be trained in this in order to have this gift developed. So the initiatory cave is a cave where the people that are going to be shamans or curanderos are initiated and start to be formed. In North America, they call it the vision quest, for example. The vision quest has that symbol, the, the dances of the moon, the dances of the sun. So it's, it's not only particular to Chavin, but in Chavin, this initiatory cave ritual, initiation, receiving of elements of knowledge uh, goes in these spaces without light and without in sound. I don't know if you know the, the poem Itaca by Constantino Cavafis. Cavafis has a poem, very nice poem. And he talks about when you go to Itaca, when you travel to Itaca, Itaca you will not find um, monsters like the Cyclops or the Lestrigons unless you put it in, from yourself in front of you. What you will see in these uh, spaces of darkness and, and, and silence is what you bring to them. So this is very important because once you start seeing what you have inside, you can see what who you are and what has been uh, transmitted in a good way and also through maybe a, a, a trauma, yes? So it's a way to, to get to know yourself, initiation rituals. But also- Thank you, um, uh, I'm sorry, Carlo. I just wanted to let you know that it, we're at the top of the hour. In fact, it's a minute past. And um, I know that there's there will be a, more the sessions to come in the future and as well there's the mushrooming session so if you if you wanted to propose another session during that time you you are there is an opportunity to do that the mushrooming session um, um before we end up uh closing up because we will have other um scheduled uh sessions at nine uh at half past the hour um if anyone has any questions for carlo thus far or you know where we can reach him maybe Carlo if you want to put in the chat how people can reach you or if, if you know how a uh, website where you might uh, have more information about your presentation this is all fascinating I, I would like to stay here for another hour um, or two um, and uh, you know thank you so much for all of the presentation material and the cultural explanations as well as the sort of the deep history that you're un unveiling uh, for us. So thank you so much for all of this. Does anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask before we leave? Well, I can see that there, there are people that are asking for you to organize a session to continue the presentation. So well, no, is, we're, well, I'm just, we're just asking, um, you know, do, uh, mm -hmm. do we have just another five or 10 minutes that he can wrap up and finish his presentation? Yeah. I think well, the session is, why I... is in half an hour. So yeah, I think 10 minutes is good. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, it's fine if we spend some time like answering some questions, if you have what you're, I, I actually have to leave as well. <laughs> 
um, because I have to host another session in another room. Otherwise, I would. Can, be happy um, to I've been a tech host before. This is Nicole. You can just make me the tech host if you want, like change the host function. Oh, okay. Okay. So in 10 minutes then. Excellent. All right. Um, did, uh, was there anything else that you wanted to ask or any other uh, uh, information or maybe Carol, you wanted to wrap up with a slide or two? Yeah, I can wrap up in three minutes. Okay. I'm, I'm totally happy to stay. Just transfer the host to me. Uh, sure. I'm, I'm, I can leave in 10 minutes. It's not a problem. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so we have many type of rituals. <laughs> uh, we have initiation rituals, we have renewal rituals, welcoming rituals, uh, medicinal rituals. So they have many functions, yes. Uh, the, in the medicinal functions, rituals participate in the health system to treat illness, illnesses. Also creates a liminal space to promote the body's agency in regeneration, in regeneration in relationships with the body, society, and the world, yes? Medicine is not only about one, it's about community. Even here we have rituals to heal the, the fields, the, the crop fields, yes? So the medicine is for everybody. Even for the sun, we have rituals for the sun. <laughs> um, social function, they create space for resolving conflicts and tensions, like in renewal rituals. A space to reinforce the feelings of collectivity, community. Educational function, a means to convey complex cultural dimensions, symbolic, so social, sensory, beyond cognitive processes and represent representational thought. Educational function participates in the preservation, transmission, and reproduction of culture. Because in these rituals, you also have dances and stories and songs that talk about the, the creation myths the stories that that uh, pass down values and ways to behave and ways to, to think and ways to relate. The shamanic function also because it's a, it's a way to connect and negotiate with subtle beings of the natural energetic worlds, the upper and the underworld, and also a way to learn the properties and characteristics of plants, health conditions, therapies, and other knowledges. It's, it's like the, the visions in within a ritual are like in, in a in a in a dream in a dream where you learn sometimes dreams you are used to learn you have dreams that you are taught things right now in in, in the modern world we have lost this uh, we have forgotten this technology but still it is coming up it's coming back again so these are times of, of things coming back so Cultural element, elements that are transmitted through, through rituals are that there are human and non-human persons that are animals that have uh, characteristics that you can learn, reciprocity, ancestor worship. You honor your ancestors. Yes, that's very important in community. Complementary position, imbalance, yes, has to be the same level, not one above the other. Sense of community, are you and our principle? The free world, the four directions, yes, has to do with a lot of things, and, and we can talk about only only about this in in another, in another session. And well, this is a, a, a this, it is very important, Chavi, and and they um, have this property of being. Uh, the cactus are mainly from of all the cactus species, all are from the Americas except one that is from Africa. And and they are have a spine, so they are fierce, but in the inside they are pottery and tender. Yes, they have this duality too. Seem very male because they grow like in a phallic way, but the the, the flower is so feminine because it's so big and so um, it has a, a nice aroma and, and more. So that that's why what I wanted to to wrap up. I hope you enjoyed this and, and got something from this. And if you come to Peru and to Chavin, well, I'm here, so <laughs> give me a call. Thanks. That was lovely, Carlos. Thank you for wrapping up. We really appreciate your the extra time that you're taking to, um, you know, put a 
broche de oro. <laughs> Uh, and uh, a, a final touch uh, on our presentation. Um, I, I don't know if there are any other questions that I might ask. People are asking if you have a website or how can they reach you. Did you want to put it in the chat? Okay. There yeah. We go. Okay, thank you. Were there any other questions before we end up wrapping up for Carlos? A couple more minutes. Um, I oh, mean, just good. to know if this space is open to travelers or uh, is it like a closed community? Yes, the temple can be visited and, and uh, it's open. It's open and 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 even you can have ceremonies with the cactus there. Not too many share it, uh, but there are there are good people that know how to do it. I, I every year we receive people from Australia, indigenous people that are uh, trying to remember through rituals, through the knowledge is here. They're trying to heal the knowledge is there because of colonization in in Australia, and uh, so it's open. And it's like the entrance is like free for the US. You can stay there for all the time. It's not like Machu Picchu, where you only have two hours to visit Machu Picchu. Chavit, you can stay all, all day. Well, from nine to five. Lovely, thank you. A lot yeah, of, I, um, I'm sorry, um, Acado, a lot of uh, museums uh, in, sorry, a lot of sites, archeological sites in Peru, have um, a site museum? Does uh, does uh, Chavin the ones that have a site museum so that people can make sense of the of the history and the journey as well? Yes, there, Chavin next to Chavin and next to the town there is the Chavin National Museum, and it's it's full of the objects you have seen, and uh, yeah, you you can visit it, and there are some pieces of Chavin around in, in Europe and the U.S. I know. I I tend to like to read. I'm not going to be able to visit Peru anytime soon. Um, is there like any kind of book or maybe even a website that's got like kind of comprehensive, in-depth reading, especially on the rituals? Yeah. I, I there are some there are more books about the archaeological part. Uh, I I am working on a book. I plan to to finish it next year about these parts from from more a cultural perspective, not only the material culture. I also wrote a short story book, more fiction, but based on on Chavin culture and I'm we're working on on the translation a friend from Australia did the translation I have to check it out and we'll have a, a electronic version about it yes so I have a blog but this is in Spanish and um, I shared a, a link to a drive document and and I there's an article that I wrote it's more scientific but I think uh, not so scientific, it's more ethnographic about the coca plant. And I talk a little bit about Chavin and a problem that was going on there. So you can read about it. Yeah. Thanks for the Thanks. questions. Are there any other the questions? Uh, Susan? Was there any uh, sacrifice in the culture? Yes. Uh, Sacrification is, means making things more sacred because everything is sacred. Yes, and uh, what what uh, what you you mean human or animal? Yes, life. Uh, yeah. Yes, but, but still there are some objects, uh, ceramic objects that were sacrificed. They were filled with with corn beer and they were sacrificed and, and it was part of the offering what we know is that um, they have found uh, 
only one evidence in, in one period of uh, humans or, or human bones, uh, but it's, it's not so so clear what, what happened there. And uh, probably uh, there was, a, we don't know if the person was put there alive and then and killed, or it was after he died, he was put there. And, um, and 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 there are many questions about it, but it is not like in the coast we have like a mocha culture. Mocha culture, they, they it is a different society, and they have a lot of heads. They sacrificed or offered humans to to the water to the sea in a very clear way. There is no doubt that they were making sacrifices. In Chavin. We, we see offerings. Mm. We see what you you offer is what you find more, uh, what you find is most valued. So you you put corn, you put uh, ceramics, you put uh, animals, llamas, uh, and 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 in this particular case, they have human bones, and um, okay. it's. There was one See, image you showed of a person who was cutting their own throat. What was that about? Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, that's an um, auto-sacrifice, right? Um, well, from an archaeological point of view, it's very dif dif difficult to understand this. Yes, you have to see anthropology and, and, con and comparative anthropology. Uh, what we, what, what I understand. Yes, what I think, what I believe is that this person, uh, also I shared this with some friends that work there. I, I, I have some rituals with uh, Cecilia. Cecilia, she uh, shares the, the medicine. And we say that this is the, the largest offering that one person can make to, to, to offer himself or herself. And, and, and maybe it's about this because uh, you sometimes your your life can change things and, and, and in energetic weight also. Nice cat. And also sometimes in some cultures of the Andes and the Amazons, like in Guarani, the Guarani, when the old person dies, as a wise person dies, they eat the person. So the energy and wisdom of the person remains in the in the in the community. So it's not like gastronomic cannibalism, but uh, it's ritual anthropophagia. Anthropophagy. Yes, yes, thanks. Okay, I'll make it quick. Um, I noticed that the first part of the presentation was very scientific, um, very, you know, archeological standard kind of, but then you also have um, you know, your ancestors who uh, practice the medicine part of it, um, the spiritual part of things. When when it comes to you personally, how do you reconcile the two? And when I feel at the end of the day, what really drives us is what we believe. So when you have, do you find yourself in a situation where you have to choose between the scientific um, person and the person who has received this um legacy how do you how do you is that a is there a conflict there and how do you resolve that i know it's not really related to the presentation or the culture but to you um if you don't mind Ch chavin is very personal for me yes everything is personal and um i come from lima and my grandfather from my male part is was italian and uh, but I have this strong uh, connection to, to the Andes, and um, sometimes I I have dreams that I can see what is going to happen the next day, uh, or or my mother is is a uh, has some preoccupation and and in the morning in the dream I, I hear her voice, and my sister also hears her voice, so I, I know that something is going on. And what I believe is that I'm. I'm not um, 
we call it, there's people that in the Andes are called Chaka Runas, people that are bridging, Chaka, bridge, Runa, people, people that bridge things. So I see myself there, not only between people from European descent in Lima, trying to understand the Andes, that is very needed because there is still a lot of racism and, and colonial legacies, but also between the, the traditional cultures and the scientific cultures. So, so the article I shared is about that. I'm trying to connect different ways of understanding. So, so I also not only write fiction or academic articles, but I also make documentaries. I, um, I also, this in two weeks, we're having an event in Huaraz and we're bringing indigenous people to, to share things. So I also organize things. Uh, um, so I, I see in my role, my personal role, my personal path to share things that I have received and then I, I have to move with them. Yes, because everything is not, knowledge is not mine, it's, it's, it's past and, and it's landed, it's prestado. Knowledge is, is, is for everyone. That's also why I also work in Wikipedia. We, we share in Wikipedia, it's an open knowledge uh, platform. And, and half of my time, I were working on how to share more knowledge that serves the people, not only just for open knowledge, knowledge that serves the people and, and bring more equity in knowledge. More different types of knowledges are also represented, especially from cultures that have been colonized, their knowledges have been persecuted. And so I, I have like, um, because I'm, I have a different background i can have a little bit more impact yes on 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 trying to, to make people understand what is the andes especially that people have some prejudices about the andes and, and then the cultures